Good morning, Madison Middle School families, students, and staff. I want to welcome you to our Safe Steps to Safe Schools meeting. Next. Ms. Bloom will now explain how you can access the translation that's being provided. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our presentation. We're very happy to have you here. If you need translation, we do have it on a separate channel for Spanish. Please select your language preference now by pressing the globe button that you see at the bottom of your screen. Choosing either English or Spanish. If you choose English, then when questions come in in Spanish or anything is in Spanish, it will translate to English. Please feel free to add your comments in Spanish in the Q&A button. And a copy of this presentation in Spanish is available on our local district Northeast website. You can simply search for LDNE to get to the homepage. Thank you. Moving on. Today, Madison staff want to discuss with you an important choice that you have to make by this Friday regarding how you would like your student to finish out the school year. As many of you know, we're making progress towards our plans to reopen school. The target to reopen middle schools is presently the end of April. Our goal is to do this as soon as possible, but in the safest way possible. Today, we are gonna take a careful look at the three pieces of the puzzle that need to be in place in order to get schools reopened, and also to discuss the choice we are as asking all families to make about how they would like their student to finish out the school year. The first priority is that the LA Unified has set up the highest standard of health and safety practices at our school. Assistant Prin Principal Mr. Tate will discuss some of those um, practices that have been set up in the classroom and around campus to help keep us safe. The second priority that we need to reach in order to open schools is to reduce the spread of COVID-19 virus throughout the community that we serve. The third priority has been to offer vaccines to all school staff. Moving on. Madison Middle School, in alignment with the LA Unified, has set up a school health and safety readiness report card that is available to the public. The readiness report card indicates the status of key actions that we must take in order for all school, for all students, all staff, and all families to proceed safely to return to school. This readiness report card is available on the LA Unified website. Moving on. Today, we're gonna to take a closer look at how we can assist you in choosing which school setting your student would like to complete the rest of the year. I want you to know going into this, that this decision is very personal and very differ different for each family. Some families will elect to finish the school year with their student completely remote. Other families may elect to return to campus based on the hybrid model that we're going to explain today. In order to get more details on what both look like, the LA Unified has has published the Return to Campus Family Guide. I'm now gonna turn the meeting over to Ms. Bloom to discuss this in further details. Moving on. This is the Family Guide to Return to Campus, and it has been revised to include additional information about preparations for a return to campus. You can access the Family Guide by going to the link, Link to Family Guide. You see the bottom right there, and if you put a space after Family Guide, 
and type in SPA, you will get to the Spanish version. Moving on. Beginning the week of March 11th, so we have come here, the online program selection form is available for families to complete and submit online by March 19th, which is this Friday. The selection form has the following questions. Please select which program you would like for your child to participate in when students are able to physically return to campus, virtual or hybrid. If available, would you have your child participate in on-site supervised care in a hybrid model when they are not receiving direct instruction? If your child is eligible for school bus transportation, part of the magnet program eligibility, or based on individualized education programs or IEPs, do you anticipate using LA Unified Transportation? We would also like your input on the 2021 2022 school calendars. You will need your child's 10-digit student ID number to complete the selection form. You can find the ID number in the parent portal. Moving on. Good morning, everyone, and happy Wellness Wednesday in LAUSD. I truly hope that each and every one of you are doing well today. Um, we are glad to greet the reopening of schools at the end of April, as Ms. Parker mentioned, and I'm sure many of you have wondered about how students' schedules will look. So, well, here it is, as you can see on the slide deck, um, and many of you might have already seen it before, we have two schedules. One for students who will attend to instruction on campus, and um, actually the next slide that I will speak on later is another that pertains only to those students who will stay in remote learning mode. The schedules were developed with the well-being and safety of our students in mind. Therefore, we have implemented a check-in time, if you see on the schedule, for in-person community building and social emotional learning before our students attend their academic courses. We have two schedules shown on the slide deck here side by side. On the left side, we have the Monday schedule. And on the right side, we have the schedule for Tuesday through Friday. Mondays are always shorter to allow after school time for teacher professional development. Let's take a look at the schedule on the right. Take a look at it with me. Students will begin the day with a transition time in the beginning where they will have to pick up breakfast in a baggie and eat in a socially distanced manner outside. As depicted in the schedule, after students check in with their teachers, they will attend their odd or even courses. Then they will have advisory, then they will have lunch time, and lastly, they will attend to the last course of the day before they are, they are dismissed um, at 2.30. Now the same schedule will occur on Monday with advisory at the end of the day and dismissal at 2 p.m. We will have the schedules available for families on our website and on Schoology as well. So you will have access to those. And I would like to explain the cohorts. Now students will be arranged in cohorts based on their advisory classes H or L. Students will be in smaller classes, um, similar if not equally the same as their current advisory classes, where the maximum will be 12 students and two adults. Cohort H will attend school on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and um, while cohort L will attend school on Wednesdays and Fridays. Now Mondays will be alternating, which means that cohort H will attend school on let's say the first Monday and cohort L will attend the following Monday. Cohort means that the same group of students stay together for schooling, that students are basically in stable groupings. The purpose of this structure is to ensure the safety of everyone on campus 
because let's say if one individual, whether it's a student or adult, uh, contracts the virus, then we will take measures to ensure that the specific cohort is quarantined and they will continue with remote instruction until it is safe to return to campus. It is the most effective way to contain the virus if there is exposure, which we sure hope there won't be, of course. Uh, moving forward to our next schedule, um, which is meant for students who will resume with remote learning. The schedules are exactly the same except for advisory. Student advisory times will change to the morning from 8.30 to 9, so students will begin their day just a bit early. Um, then they will attend the rest of their classes and will be dismissed at 1.20 on Monday, again shorter, and 2.30 for all other days of the week. Moving on, this slide shows how the classroom will look when campus reopens. Students will be supervised by their advisory teacher uh, while they complete coursework online and participate in independent work time when they're not receiving direct instruction. Students will continue to learn online while the teacher in the classroom teaches online. Now, um, noise canceling headphones will be provided so that everyone in the class may engage in their individual courses. And majority of the day will be taught online to balance out safety as well as engagement. Now remember, secondary schedules are very complex with each student having about six or seven classes. Therefore, this is the best way to help students maintain current schedules and as well as maintain the same teachers. Live instruction and interaction will take place only during check-in time and advisory classes. Students will close their computers and the advisory teacher will have, you know, they will have specially designed lessons provided by the district that will be geared towards social emotional learning and college and career readiness. So they will have that time for live instruction. In addition, on-site supervised care will be available for middle school students during the times when they are not receiving direct instruction. Thank you for your attention and we will answer any questions you have at the end of the presentation. Good morning, I'm Mr. Tate, Assistant Principal. And the next few slides are gonna talk about uh, items to ensure that your children and staff on campus are as safe as possible uh, while they're participating in the daily activities. So one of the things that the district has done uh, in conjunction with following the guideline from the CDC, uh, State of California and Los Angeles County Department of Health is ensure that we have hand sanitizer uh, throughout campus. <clears throat> These hand sanitizing stations will be placed in hallways and in offices. Uh, we have the plexiglass barriers that have been set up in offices and uh, during tutoring times. And also uh, in the classrooms, you'll notice that we will have a constant desanitizing of desks, hourly uh, hand sanitizing or sanitizing, uh, um, pardon me, sanitizing of uh, doorknobs and handles and, and things of that nature. Uh, and uh, classrooms have been set up in a particular manner to ensure that students are distance six feet apart. Uh, in the restrooms, only uh, every other stall will be available. Stalls have been covered. And throughout campus, there's signage uh, on the walls, et cetera, reminding students to wear masks, maintain social distancing, and arrows on the ground uh, in offices and throughout campus designating uh, walking paths that are directional. Uh, moving on. As you notice in the slide to the right, 
Uh, we have air filtration upgrades to higher performing MERV 13 filters, which are some of the highest uh, grade filtration systems. Uh, and in the classroom, the classrooms will be set up. Right now we have it uh, no more than 14 students to uh, two staff, uh, maximum of 16 persons in the classroom. Uh, and that will also depend on the size of the classroom. Certainly, if the classroom is uh, a smaller classroom, then that number uh, would be decreased accordingly. As you see here also in the pictures to the right and to the left, uh, you'll notice stickers on the desk and they say, do not sit here. And so those are placed on the desk along with the desk being spaced apart for social distancing. You'll also notice that all students in the photograph to the left are wearing masks. We wanna ensure that all of our students and staff are wearing masks 100% of the time. In the classrooms, cloth furniture, uh, couches, things of that nature have been removed and any excess furniture has been removed from the classrooms as well. Uh, and we wanna ensure that the classrooms have enough space so that uh, students can walk throughout the classroom. Ventilation systems are um, on 24 hours a day. And uh, as I said, those filters are changed monthly, but the, the uh, air conditioners are running 24 hours a day to ensure that uh, air is pushed outside of the room. Next slide. When students arrive to campus in the morning, one of the things that they'll see on all of the entry gates, which will be approximately three to four uh, entry and exit gates, they'll see this large sign here, one similar for the daily health check. And it goes through all of the personal and community safety check protocols, uh, maintaining six feet distance, uh, avoid uh, inviting people into the home, uh, wearing a face mask, different things of that nature. It has do's and don'ts. And so one of the things that'll happen is all the students with cell phones uh, they will log on to the Daily Pass app. And in the app, they'll answer those questions. When they arrive to the gate, they'll show the uh, district personnel at the gate their Daily Pass, and we'll actually be able to check to make sure that uh, the student has filled out and carried out all of the proper protocol to be able to enter campus. Having the mask on, uh, being able to sanitize their hands before entering campus, et cetera. Moving on. This is what the daily pass looks like. And so uh, before arriving to school, we asked that students go ahead and, and complete their daily pass in the morning so that when they're walking through the gates, uh, it'll be very simple for them to just show their daily pass, have their uh, screening undertaken, and then uh, go ahead and enter campus. Staff will be doing the same thing. Actually, we're currently doing it right now before we even enter onto campus. And visitors, as you'll see uh, in a moment, will be utilizing the same system. For students that do not have a cell phone, uh, a paper version will be available and all staff at the gate will also have computer devices uh, to perform this function as well. Moving on. And one of the other things that'll be done uh, with students after they show their daily pass, and we ensure they have a mask on, et cetera, then the personnel at the gate will take their temperature. Um, entry uh, will be allowed to campus for individuals whose temperature is 99.9 uh, degrees Fahrenheit or less. And we wanna make sure at the gate that uh, the student is properly wearing their face mask and knows how to do that. Next slide. Okay, the daily health check for visitors. So if a parent or another visitor, uh, whether it's district personnel or, or otherwise, will go through these same protocols, they'll go online, log on to the uh, daily pass, perform the daily health check sanitizing their hand, ensure the mask wearing, and also have their temperature checked prior to coming onto campus. Next slide, moving on. 
Okay, so thank you, Mr. Tate. So that is a lot of information, but, and you may be thinking, how can I really prepare my child to be able to return to campus if I choose? So there's many ways that, many things that we can do right now. So the first thing that you'll wanna do is to schedule a COVID-19 test. And this can be done through the Daily Pass um, site here or the Daily Pass app. Um, you will be able to then um, schedule the um, test and it is on any of the school camp, uh, Madison has a testing facility on our school campus and you can then uh, easily come on campus for that COVID test. Now, the great thing about it is all members of the household can receive the COVID test for um, free through LAUSD. The next thing is to make sure that you are practicing with your child how to wear a face mask properly over both the mouth and the chin. And be get, make sure to continue maintaining appropriate social distance from others and also practice how to wash your hands often and frequently and correctly. And of course, if you have any questions, we are here to help you with um, scheduling your COVID-19 test. There is a video that will be made available to you on our website and it's also available on LAUSD's website. It's about a little less than 20 minutes and it does go through step by step um, some preparations for that you can take. Um, so this is something that if you are interested in, you can um, watch at your convenience. So as I mentioned, we do have a testing facility here at Madison and you can book that appointment at dailypass.lausd.net. Um, and if you're looking for your stu parent, uh, the student ID to be able to book for that COVID-19 test, it is available through the Parent Portal app. Now, some of you may or may not already have Parent Portal um, access. If you are needing Parent Portal support for signing up, please come to one of our weekly support Zoom sessions. They're held on Fridays from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And the join code is seen here. You can also access this information through our website, um, through the Google or through the calendar. And you'll see on Fridays that there is a parent portal support Zoom session. Since there is no school next Friday, we will also be holding a parent portal Zoom support on Thursday at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. So if you're needing any support, please feel free to come on this Friday or next Thursday or any Friday afterwards. In addition, today I will be hosting this parent portal support um, after this meeting from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. for anybody who's here today that would like to get on with parent portal. I will give another re good reason why um, you'll need parent portal, not only for scheduling the COVID-19 test, but if your child is 12 years or younger, you will need to complete the COVID day or the daily health check for your student to be able to receive the QR code. So if your child is 12 years or younger, know that the daily pass will be needed to be completed by the parent um, through the parent portal login. We are here to help you and we do, we've created lots of resources for you. So we encourage you to stay connected with us and you can visit our website. We have a section uh, all about our COVID-19 updates and there are videos and postings and updates there that we encourage you to check out. In addition, you can always call us at the school at 818-255-5200. And also check out our social media platforms on Twitter and Instagram for updates. Now, if you do have questions, please put them in the Q&A section on Zoom and we will respond to them. Thank you, Ms. Lester. My, um, I need my setting change to start video. So I want to express my sincerest gratitude to the admin staff who have just presented. We have been on campus for um, the past few months, every day working diligently to try to 
create the safest environment possible. And I want all parents to know that that is paramount to um, our commitment to returning students safely to campus. That most of us are parents also, that we are educators and we understand the difficulty and the importance of this decision that you're going to make. And we pledge our best to do everything possible to keep all of us safe. One of the, the key components of keeping everyone safe is to ensure that our students are in pods. And in order to ensure that, I, I'm getting a lot of questions regarding can students interact with other students outside of their classes while on campus? And the answer, the short answer to that is no, they may not. For the time being, until the end of the school year, when students do return to campus, they will be in groups of 12 or 14. And the students will be in one classroom and they will be designated a bathroom to use. During lunch, students will eat outside and they will eat with their pod only those students in their advisory classes. The reason is we know the less interaction a student has in large group settings, the greater we can reduce the risk of infection. So for the time being, lunch will be in small groups in pods. We will also be scattering entrance onto campus the beginning of the day. So your student, should you elect to return to hybrid model and have your student come to campus two or three days a week, the student will be given a time when to enter campus between eight and 8.30 most likely so that we can scatter it and ensure greater safety. Another question we're getting regards uniforms. The decision regarding uniforms has not officially been made yet by the school committee, but I think it's pretty safe to say that we will not be enforcing our uniform policy until the beginning of next year for several reasons. One being we want students to have access to um, their entire wardrobe to ensure that um, their clothes are as clean as possible to reduce infection risk. So most likely um, the answer is no, we will not be requiring uniforms until we start back for the next school year. Another questions um, we have, let's see, and you're welcome to type them in, is, um, the question is regarding, can my student go between online and the hybrid model? And the district right now, if you opt for um, one of the models, hybrid or online, and then you just your family changes their mind, the district is gonna open up the selection choice, we're told every two weeks. So about every two weeks, you will have the opportunity to switch whether it's hybrid or online. That looks like um, all the questions we have. Are there any other questions? Feel free to type them in. Okay, well, I wanna thank everyone for joining us. I wanna let you know that this is an ongoing process. And right now we know that these two models that, that are being offered aren't perfect by any choice. They're our first step back um, to resuming school the way that we all want it to be. So I thank everyone for your flexibility, for your understanding, and I encourage you to fill out the program selection guide by this Friday so that we can plan whichever option you choose for your student. Thank you and have a great day.